Hi friends, I'm back to read chapter two of Humphrey School Fair Surprise. And if you remember, chapter one was surprising news. They were trying to um, come up with some ideas for the fair and they had to come up with um, something that made room 26 special. Think about what makes room 26 special. If you remember at the end of the story, they were saying that the two things that make their room special are Humphrey and Og. So that was chapter one, and today we're going to be reading chapter two, busy, busy, busy. So here we go. The next morning after math and reading, Mrs. Brisbane gave each student a large piece of cardboard. It's time to make our signs, she said. My friends all went to work drawing and writing on those blank pieces of cardboard. From my cage by the window, it was hard to make out what their signs looked like. They couldn't finish them in one day, so the next day they worked on them again. By lunchtime, I could finally see what they had done. Richie's sign read, Room 26 is hamsterific. Art said, Room 26 is frogtastic. You can see how they're making the signs. It says, Frog rules, hamster power, Humphrey rules, go Og. <laughs> that means they think that Og and I are terrific and fantastic. That made me feel good, good, good. There were other great signs, too. Miranda's read, Humphrey rules. Saye's sign said, go, go. That's funny, because Og is go, spelled backwards. Tabitha and Kirk made signs that read, hamster power and frogs rule. The signs were every color of the rainbow. Some had flowers and glitter. Some had funny pictures of Og and me. All of them made me proud to be in room 26. At the end of the day, after science, my friends made ears. Yes, yes, yes. They took paper, scissors, crayons, and glue, and made little hats with hamster ears sticking up. It was funny to see my human friends wearing hamster ears. They didn't make frog ears because, as I said, frogs don't have ears. But that you can see. You've done a wonderful job, Mrs. Brisbane told the class. Tomorrow we'll practice marching. There they are wearing their ears. My hands are ears. <laughs> Later that afternoon, Og and I were alone in the classroom. I looked out. I looked out at all the signs. Don't they look great? I asked Og. They must be the best in the school. Boing, Og said. I knew he agreed with me. I wish I had a sign, I said. Boing, boing, Og said. I like doing everything my friends in room 26 did. But if I carried a sign, it would have to be a teeny tiny one. I started to think of a plan. I looked up at the clock. It would be hours before Aldo came in to clean room 26. So I took a big chance. I jiggled the lock that doesn't lock on my cage. My friends all think the door is locked. They don't know that I can open it and get out. Don't worry, Og, I said. I'll be right back. Og splashed in his tank as I slid down the leg of the table and scampered across the room. That was the easy part. Finding the art supplies to make a sign wouldn't be so easy. There's an open space under each tabletop where my friends keep their supplies, but it's really hard for a small hamster to reach that space. Then I noticed that Richie had left his jacket hanging over the back of his chair. Mrs. Brisbane wouldn't like that, but I did. I was able to stand up on my tippy toes and reach up, up, up to grab the sleeve with my paws. I held on tightly and slowly climbed up the sleeve. Then one, two, three, I leaped into the back to the seat of... I leaped into the seat of Richie's chair. I stood on the edge of the chair and I reached up, up, up. I grabbed the collar of the jacket and pulled myself into the open space. Oh, what treasures I found there. Crayons, markers, pencils, a ruler, scissors, glue, books, and paper. How I wish I had a desk like that. Boing, 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 all called out as warning. I looked over at the window. It was getting dark. I poked around quickly and found what I was looking for tiny square of brown cardboard. Richie was a very nice boy. I was pretty sure he wouldn't mind if I took it. Then I remembered that Og might like a sign too. So I poked around some more until I found another teeny tiny square of cardboard. Boing! Og called out again. Boing! 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 He was right. There was no time to waste. I put the cardboard squares in my mouth. Then I jumped down to the chair, grabbed onto the sleeve of Richie's coat, and slid to the ground. There he is sliding down with the cardboard in his mouth. Oops, I landed on the floor with a big thump. I raced towards the table. 
I can't slide up the table leg, so I grabbed the cord hanging down from the blind. I swung on it and swung some more until I was level with the tabletop. Then I let go. I zoomed across the table right up to Og's tank. I'll make great time for you, I promised him. Suddenly, I heard footsteps coming down the hall toward room 26. Boing, Og said. I hurried to my cage and pulled the door behind me. The lock that doesn't lock clicked into place just in time. No one would know I had ever gotten out of my cage. I tucked the cardboard under some of my bedding. The door to room 26 opened and the lights went on. Alville's here to bring you cheer, a friendly voice said. Aldo wheeled his cleaning cart into the room. How are my favorite classroom pets? He asked. Great, I said. Boing, Og answered. Aldo glanced around the room. Uh-oh, Richie forgot his jacket, he said. I'll have to talk to him about that. Aldo's Richie's uncle. As he swept and dusted, he talked to us. Guess what, fellows? Aldo asked. What? I squeaked back. I signed up to be in the wet sponge booth for the school fair, he said. I was squeakless. What on earth was a wet sponge bath booth? Yep, people pay money to throw wet sponges at some of the folks who work at the school, he said. I think even Mr. Morales signed up. I couldn't imagine anyone throwing a sponge at the principal or the custodian. Anything to help make money for Longfellow School, he said. I could see his point, but I hoped no one would throw a wet sponge at me. After all, hamsters should never, never, never get wet. Og probably wouldn't mind, since he spends half his time in the water side of his tank. When Aldo finished cleaning, he left the blinds open so the light from the street lamp came in the room. It was time for me to get to work. I pulled the cardboard squares out from under the bedding. I reached behind the little mirror in my cage where I hide my small notebook and pencil. This time, all I needed was the pencil and something to write. There he is, starting his sign. And that is the end of chapter two. Chapter three is, it's not fair. Mm, I wonder why things are not fair. And it kind of, it's like the school fair. We'll find out a little bit more next time.